No mercenary commander in Japan came close to leading a force like Nariko's. Even thinking of her as a mercenary was rapidly falling out of fashion with the samurai lords. She had no lands but for the estates indebted to her, and she made a point of avoiding employment under the daimyo of the land. To outside observers, she was squandering a precious chance to ride her fame into a place in the nobility. Instead, all she did was make the nobility uneasy at her presence. For the common people, it was the opposite, and their adoration was the true motivator behind Nariko's self-proclaimed crusade to the ancient land of Hokkaido. Well, I think I can tell you the problem. You've spilt more powder on the floor than you've managed to get into the barrel. Ah, yes, quite right. I'm still a little shaky at all that. Don't worry. A few more times and you'll be as fearless as any of us. <laughs> fearless? You know, Lord Ito, I'd heard... Did you get any? Which one of us? Neither. Well, I know you didn't, Jungun. You've got enough powder on your hands to fire a Nanban ship cannon. Sorry, Marisama. I was trying, really. It's not natural for me. No, no it's not. So why even bother? You were meant to stay in Tsushima. Come on, Mary. You sound like his mother. Exactly what he needs. Explain yourself, then. I just... Uh, well, I couldn't let all this talk of a historic artifact pass me by. Hmm, I don't know if that's worth risking your life for. With all respect, Mary Sama, we think very different things are worthwhile. I don't know. You seem sane enough, though. Ah, look who it is. You don't want to look at what we've collected? Just checking on my little boy. Are you sure you're okay with putting his life on the line like this? Marry Sima, really, it's fine, please. I, uh... Well, I think it's up to him, ultimately. And I couldn't let a chance to find a historic artifact pass him by. How... consistent. Oh my, oh my. Carry on, everyone. Kodge, let's go and discuss the nature of this historic artifact privately. Hello and welcome back to Nariko's Treasure. We're right after a battle with some pirates in the Yukita clan's territory and I moved to the village of Takahashi hoping to buy some food but it turned out the village had been infested by bandits so we could volunteer to help the local peasantry take their homes back. The battlefield is very awkward. We arrive at the battlefield in this little gully where we're protected on one side by those big cliffs but it also means we can't form up properly. So I tried to establish some sort of combat formation using the tree line to the side of the road to contain all of my archers while everyone else just stands on the road to receive the brunt of the bandit attack which now comes out of the town. I was very happy to see though that the bandits have very poor quality of arms, most of them armed with wooden sticks and none of them wearing armour, meaning that this battle is actually going to be extremely easy. That's not going to be any consolation to the peasantry that we're helping take back the town because they're going to have the same kind of equipment, if not worse, so they'll still be in danger, but our troops will be fine, and Nariko herself in pretty much no danger, taking the chance to practice with the old sword from horseback at close quarters, and after taking a few bruises, ordering everyone to just charge out and overwhelm the last few survivors, which goes without a hitch, missing texture on the battlefield there for some reason, but anyway, the battle ends in a victory with four killed among the peasants we helped. I felt it wasn't that bad, but the bandits must have advanced closer to our lines than I thought they did there. It was a little bit messy. A shame, but at least they've got their village back. They didn't have any supplies they could sell us, so we weren't able to get what we needed. So I thought we'll just try the next villages over, but you can see that both of them have already been destroyed by the clan warfare, so they're not going to be able to supply us with any food anytime soon. Now there were lots of pirate bands in the area and as I advanced at night a bunch of them came together for a battle with us, 70 pirates in all but now that our war party is so large that's barely a threat. So I formed up and decided to observe how the party does in these large battles now that it's so much bigger and you can see we're just absolutely bombarding them with arrows with this three line formation with the Onobushi and the skirmishers both providing range support. We're doing so much damage to the enemy at such a great range that really our melee troops are barely even necessary 
necessary in this situation. I noticed Jun Gyun wasn't getting involved in this fight, perhaps embarrassed after being criticised for his previous performances at ranged combat. He's not going to help out, but he's not going to be needed. The enemy were wiped out before they got anywhere near us, and the battle came to an end, with no casualties, of course. So we moved to the larger city of Okuyama, where fortunately the markets were still going, so we were able to sell off weapons and buy the food we needed to continue. Now heading slightly further east towards Himeji, we encountered another site of general chaos with rebels and deserters all over the place and I even spotted a band of villagers who'd been attacked by some of the rebels. There weren't many rebels, only 11, so easy for us to simply sweep them off the field here in order to save these villagers. I decided to use a tactic I don't ever do really, which is just charging the enemy as the battle starts. It's the fastest way to get the fight going, and the most risky way, because you have to fight out of formation, and your fast units engage first, meaning it's us cavalry that's going to do the fight to start with. So we all rush forward and cut through the enemy's loose and small formation. There's not much they can do. That guy there who just went down in front of me, I think, was shot by Jun Gyun from horseback, which is extremely difficult, especially for an amateur. So he's certainly showing some signs of improvement, or at least having particularly good luck. And now for the rest of the fight, we just need to duel with these spears who have surprisingly good morale considering our huge numerical advantage. They actually didn't rout there, and we even took one wounded as into Rimbo among our Onobushi as we chased them down. Anyway, we took on some more peasant women who volunteered to join us after that fight, so soon we'll have even more Onobushi. And next I decided to move north in pursuit of these rebels, and as I did it just revealed more and more chaos. Some gigantic bands of deserters from the samurai armies marauding about. They're trying to escape from me, not wanting to be anywhere near the famous hunter of brigands Naruko. But you can see there are also actual samurai clan forces around, some of them running from the deserters, others at war. It seems battles between the Amako and the Miyoshi clan are going on here despite it being quite off from their main territorial base. I think they've been drawn into a war that doesn't really benefit them and they're in huge trouble there as well so perhaps they'll reconsider after what appears to be an impending defeat comes to fruition. So now I move slightly further south and encountered another band of rebels that I decided to take on. It's probably not in Naruka's remit to completely clear up the region of so many different threats, especially with the wars going on all around. There's not all that much she can even do to stop these bands of brigands from forming, but she's going to try and take at least somewhat of a stand to leave her mark on the area and make sure people know that there is hope. First, we'll take out this band of rebels, and to do this battle a little bit differently, I decided to just sit behind my main line and see what happened if they fought in a melee. So the enemy did get into melee range this time, but the fight was over immediately. I ordered a charge as they arrived. And they actually just routed as the charge started, so there wasn't really any action, and Naruka going to charge out just to finish off some survivors there. Another easy fight. So, to make a point about fighting the rebels, we're going to take out this rebel hideout, which is right next to the road, in direct threat to the caravans and the villages. Let's try and make this one count. He looked down. Back to the usual, eh? Usual business, usual me. Do you know where all those rebels came from? I'd hazard a guess they were the former men of those burnt-out villages we passed. What about the women? Where are they now? Wishing they were here with you, I expect. We'll meet some at their base tomorrow. Unlikely to be happy that we killed their husbands. Quite right. And this is the way it must be, you will no doubt insist. It's the way it is, and the other ways are even worse. That's where I suggest you stop thinking about it. At least now your troops understand why we're doing all this, aside from the money. Well, I regret that too. I never should have told them. I'm sure every bandit in the land knows we're after an imperial treasure now. When we get back from Hokkaido, there'll be a thousand impoverished swordsmen with nothing but a chance to take. Then, that day, a thousand graves shall be dug. By my own hands, if needed, my lady. <sighs> Thanks. I just hope this is all worth living with a need for such promises. That reminds me, couldn't find Jung Gyun anywhere in the camp. Do you know where he is? Should I? Well, I... No, I suppose not. I will ask around. Time for another lesson in not setting powder alight while it's still in your hands. Lord Okasawara's report confirms it all. Twice his number on the Amako border. Doing what, exactly? He doesn't say. Here. Hmm. He says he's trapped by bandits. If that's the case, then twice his number is probably consistent with our existing information. Thank you, Yosuke. Carry on the surveillance, then. 
And remember that the moment we have confirmation that she has it, permit the agents to do anything and everything to get it to me. Take the phrase at all costs, as literally as the heavens will allow. Time to shut down this rebel camp. We're going to do the traditional strategy of trying to reduce the numbers before assaulting. We've got the team hiding behind a building, and Junkyun really cheekily just pops out and shoots one of these approaching enemies. I suspect that this guy is actually really good with firearms and is just hiding it because it seems when he needs to, he can pull off some pretty good shots. But anyway, those two enemies put down, and now we'll move forward to look for new targets. I move right up to the wall. I don't even really see anyone. I know there's someone in that tower, but I don't have an angle on them. And now I'm going to peer through these gaps in the wall looking for enemies and we see a flash of someone moving past someone's coming to investigate what's happening outside perhaps hearing the gunfire earlier on surprised more of them aren't coming out to investigate but this guy is going to have trouble because he can't take Naruko in a one-on-one -on -one. does actually get a hit though which is a rare thing for an enemy so he goes down and Naruko is going to move up through the gatehouse to actually look for enemies inside because none of them appear to be defending the exterior of their compound we see a few gathered up towards a shack at the back there so I can try and snipe them. The problem is, the second I step into view, they see me and start trying to fire back at me. And now two more guards appear. We'll have to cut them down. I'm going to hurriedly order my team to start moving up towards this gate because this might be a repeating pattern. If more guards come through, it'd be nice to have everyone just right here so we'll ambush them the second they come around the corner. Our guys getting stuck on a fence, but eventually getting up to the front line ready to fight. And indeed, guys do start to just come around the corner one by one, very kind of them. So this guy actually has a little bit of success says attacking Mary there. She takes a couple of hits, but he goes down afterwards. The party looks like it wants to move forward through the gate, which makes me think there's someone right on the corner here, but it doesn't appear to be the case. They were just being very enthusiastic. So now we're just going to go back to attempting to slowly reduce the enemy's numbers by using up all of my ammunition with long range shots against the enemy, putting myself in the line of fire, but because I have superior accuracy, that should be fine. One more guard appears to try and stop us, but he is completely surrounded and cut down with ease by our party. So now a little bit later, I've used up all my ammo, we've cut down all the enemies we can, it's time to go in for a melee assault. I'm going to the right first because that's where I believe there are fewer enemies and the radar there confirms it. So this one man who was just standing on his own at the back of the compound comes to challenge us but he's not going to have any chance and he goes down. So now we're going to move around to the left of this building. I know there are enemies up where that tower is in the distance so we'll go towards it and as I approach we see someone emerge from this long grass to attack us with a sword, not going to happen for him either. We can also see beside this shack the pile of bodies where Naruko had been sniping enemies they're all just piled on top of each other now all just waiting there to be shot while I was doing it they didn't react very well now two more enemies come down from the tower and attack me and then two more enemies come out of that building it seems just stand there then realize what's going on when they're standing on a pile of their comrades bodies but it's too late already we attack them quickly but more enemies are coming from behind us now our party was split up and are under a heavy attack. Kijiro manages to hold up a couple of them for a while. Naruko comes in and together they cut all of them down. But Mari in the distance is still dueling with enemies. It seems she's taken at least one down already and is now fighting with another. I'm going to rush over to try and help her but she didn't need the help fortunately. She cuts him down. The only party member I can't see is Jungkyun, and I can't see him on the floor either, so I'm not sure where he is. I decided to gather up my party and just take stock of what's going on. At the very least, we need to get everyone back together before moving on, so we don't have any more instances of being attacked while everyone's spread out like this. So I gather up behind this building, since I think the enemy are all at the other end of the compound, so they won't be able to see me here. And indeed, it appears to be only Jungkyun from our original team that isn't here. So we'll have to carry on without him. We shouldn't need him because there's only a couple of enemies left. So I'm just going to charge down the outside of the compound, keeping a building between me and the enemy until the last second. And they come to attack me as I round this corner. And that does absolutely nothing good for them. And the battle does come to an end. Jungkyun was wounded somewhere in the fight, but now we'll be able to find him. And we're going to get loads of great loot from raiding the base, including food, which uh, right now is more useful than it ever has been. So that's quite welcome. So with that base dispatched and the road at least slightly more safe, we'll continue on with our journey. I want to head around the Miyoshi lands. I don't want to be seen heading right through the center of Miyoshi's territory with a gigantic army, because I suspect it could be interpreted in a negative way by the uh, 
rather nervous lord of the domain. But as I move along the road, I encounter a massive battle going on between the Ikoiki rebels and the Yukita samurai clan. One of their armies is being absolutely destroyed by an enormous force of over 600 rebels. And then there's a smaller battle happening closer to me, where it's a little bit more even. It seems both sides are matched. And I decided I'll step in and fight for the samurai here on this occasion, just to destroy the rebels now that we have this opportunity and save this small band of the samurai because the Ukita clan, as we've seen, desperately needs their forces to be alive because their domain is in complete peril. And this is probably why they seem to be engaged in some very difficult wars right now. So for this battle, I'm ordering my men to set up on a hill just above where the battle is taking place. From there, they'll be able to bombard everything with arrows and gunfire, which will completely level the enemy's forces while they're waiting to join the melee at the front, which fortunately is actually a kind of columnar formation where only a few of their men are fighting, meaning it'll delay the battle and make sure they get hit by more and more arrows as the fight goes on. You can see arrows just raining, covering the screen there, and Naruko, of course, using her spear to take out some skirmishes at the back, which hastens things even further. The battle comes to an end right then and there, so an extremely quick engagement. We just wiped out those 50 enemies in no time at all, especially with the help from the Yukita forces who just charged in very recklessly, but fortunately only losing six men to the enemy's nearly 50. And of course, we are now going to gain relations and the gratitude of their lord, Ishiki. As for the rest of the Yukita forces, we are going to have to just leave them, unfortunately, to fight their desperate battle against the rebels, which we can't help with. We need to move on, and I'm going to make a very quick stop at Sakai to sell off some of the large volumes of loot we've got, making us even more money. We're so good for money right now, we could get away with just doing nothing for a very long time. And now we're going to take a very circuitous route around the Miyoshi domain. We're going down to the end of this peninsula, and then following this mountainy route along the coast, which apparently has no settlements of note whatsoever, Ever, coming all the way around to end up in Asakura Domain. So we've bypassed Miyoshi entirely, and as we approach this village of Uji, Mari claims this is her hometown. Looks the same as before. Not looking worse means it's a lucky place indeed. Too out of the way to see much of the war, perhaps. It's not all good. People in out-of-the-way places get corrupted by the fact no one checks on what's going on. Is that your excuse, Marisama? I meant the samurai. The lord was a tyrant, deserved everything that happened to him. I'm starting to think you have first-hand knowledge of what happened to him. <laughs> well, you would be quite right. But don't get too hot about it. I was only eight, didn't even think of killing him. Now times change, eh? Can someone put a gag on this little weasel? Uh, when did you leave Uji? When my parents did. I was 16. Lord kicked him off the land for not paying rent, even though it was impossible even with the income from stealing said Lord's prized horses. Didn't take long for the usual stuff to happen. No need to talk about that. Why don't you tell us about that shrine up there? It looks well kept. Yes, that's what the village is famous for, as far as its fame goes. And the reason it looks so good is because yours truly sorted it out. Very kind of you. It was my duty. I was... a Miko. Now, I've heard a great deal of lies in my time. I'm serious. Every damn person gets turned into a soldier by this war. We've probably got a few Mikos in the honor guard. Anyway, there wasn't much else to do around here. So you were a shrine maiden with a habit for stealing horses. Now there's a way to achieve that much talked about balance in life. While I was staying in the village, I decided to speak with the village headman to see if he had anything for us to do, and he did actually want us to help train some of the locals to defend the village against bandit attacks, and that of course is something Naruko is going to be interested in, and something she's very able to do thanks to her high level of trainer skill, passing on the combat experience she got from training with Master Ujie onto anyone and everyone who needs it. So to do this quest, all we'll need to do for the moment is hang around in the village and just pass on the training knowledge which happens automatically. So every few hours the training is complete and you get a chance to duel with some of the people you've been working with to test their skill. 
Now, funnily enough, you actually have to beat them in order to succeed the training here. So we're all going to strip our clothes off and go slap each other with wooden sticks in the middle of the night, apparently. This is how we're going to defend ourselves against the bandit attack. Naruko shows these two guys who's boss and shows them how it's done, I guess. Hopefully they'll learn from the experience of being beaten up. And that continues several more times until finally we do the last duel and complete the training of the village. And with very convenient timing at that very moment, some bandits attack to try and occupy the village so now Naruko can lead the newly trained peasantry in the defense of the village and this is just like the little sequences where you liberate a village from bandits so all we need to do is form up to prepare for a little battle main problem going to be that the peasantry are unequipped essentially so the bandits can easily defeat them in this combat so Naruko staying out in front and trying to gain their attention and just take out as many as she can with quick stabs from the Yari easy enough and when I finally order everyone to just charge forward we are able to overwhelm the enemy although Jungyun does get unhorsed there in his attempts to do so but the battle comes to an end as a victory and many of the peasants actually were successfully defeated by the bandits but they were all wounds so no deaths on our side fantastic we'll forego a reward in order to continue building Naruko's reputation and of course the reward the villagers were likely to have for us isn't going to be much now that we're quite rich and and okay for food. So after that I move north into Owari province, the land of the Oda, where they also have a big problem with banditry. Rebels in fact, they've actually occupied a large portion of the province and in fact there are hundreds of them just like when I first went to Kyushu and found the pirates. So I decided to engage in battle with some of these guys and get a group of almost a hundred rebels into one engagement. So this is a chance to take them out, although it should be noted that this is fairly dangerous, especially because of the terrain we deployed in a gully. And just just had time to move up one side of it before the enemy suddenly spewed over the ridge right next to where we started so no real time to prepare no real time to make use of our big ranged advantage the battle begins right away and the enemy have loads of gunners moving up to bombard our line luckily they're formed up in a blob which means a lot of them are blocking each other's line of sight so that's great for us and Naruko is literally riding circles around them just to keep their attention and try and stop them from firing on our lines because that could be devastating to be shot by so many gunners at once at really close range as well so now I order our troops to advance forwards they overwhelm the melee troops who did engage them on the front and now we can fight all of their ranged troops with our melee troops so that'll give us an advantage and their morale is breaking so that fight ended really fast it was very sudden but quite deadly we actually lost four members of our party to the enemy's attack mostly on our front lines I think a lot of them probably were actually lost to the melee rather than the ranged attacks but we are going to take on one of the peasant women who the rebels were holding hostage and get a good dose of loot from it as well clearing up a massive portion of the rebel presence in the area you're okay yes thank you thank you just doing my job I don't know how to repay you what's your name my lady Nariko. Nariko of the Thousand Treasures, if you like. You're the one who fights for the Tekida. Not anymore. Now I'm the one who fights for people like you. That's so cool. How did you end up doing all this? With luck. And help from people who want to make a difference. Especially my company of Onobushi. They're all women. Armor might not fit them, but it's women underneath, I assure you. That's crazy. And who are they? Most of them are like me. Lost something, or got something to prove. Or maybe they just want to be safe. You saw what we did to those rebels. Wow. Well, you know, I can run pretty fast, and I'm... I'm the only one left from... Uh... It's all right. You don't need to convince me of anything. If you need a place in this world, you'll have it. See that person with the golden decorations on their helmet? The one being rather thorough with the looting? That's Mary. Talk to her, and she'll show you the ropes. You mean how to fight like you guys? <laughs> It's mostly walking and just trying to get on with each other, but yeah, we'll give you gear, show you how to use it, and point you at some bad guys from time to time. Amazing! Uh, thank you so much, Lady Naruko! With those rebels destroyed, we were left with a clear run to their base, and I thought since we're going that way, we might as well do the locals a favour and try and destroy this hideout, even though of course they'll quickly form a new one. At least we'll buy some small period of calm, and as we approach the base with the usual small raiding team, hoping to quickly and quietly just dismantle it and kill everyone we see inside, we notice that they don't appear to actually have the base defended, at least from the outside. 
Some of our guys tried to shoot at some head, potentially poking up the wall somewhere, but we didn't see anything and didn't meet any resistance as I moved right up to the walls. But I took a little look inside and saw that yes indeed there are some troops inside who eventually notice through these windows that something's going on and they actually come outside. Now these guys were intent on firing at my party at first down the hill behind me, giving me a nice chance to surprise them with some sword work and then quickly take them down at close quarters, taking advantage of the fact that the enemy's naginatas are hard to use up against the wall where they can't swing them properly. This guy goes right down, not drawing his weapon fast enough. I ordered my party to follow me and I'm going to come around the side of the fort here because clearly enemies are appearing so there must be another entrance around the back and there it is just behind this guy who goes down immediately. So I was wondering where my party are, so I re-give the order to come up behind me and follow me so we can go through this entrance, but unfortunately they have slightly misinterpreted the order. They went through the front gate to come around and find me, not following me up the hill to the side of the gate. So now a massive brawl has broken out inside the fortress with enemy troops just spawning all around the party and having easy chances to attack them. Naruko is able to save a little bit of bother by taking down these guys as they spawn but we've already lost most of our troops, we need to get these survivors out. The enemy are continuing to spawn and harassing us as we try and get back outside the fort but we do manage to make it with a few troops. We've got Mari an Onobushi and a Spearman, so we lost Kajiro, Junkyun and another Onobushi who will most likely only be wounded out there, so we just need to clear things up and get to them. The enemy still advancing and Naruko staying out in the courtyard to clear them out a little bit before falling back to just regroup and assess the situation with Mari and our two remaining troops. So I don't know how many we took down just then, but we must have killed the majority of the enemies who are going to be in the base, so it may just be a case of now using our musket to clear out the remainder without having to risk the rest of our team by going inside. So I load up another shot and you can see there Naruko's arm completely drenched in blood, luckily it's mostly not hers. There's a guy who can see me through this window, we're going to do a bit of strafing and we managed to take him out and then there's a guy who seems to just appear in this bush. He's now stuck between the tree and the wall and can't swing his weapon because of it. So Naruko quickly dives into the bush and manages to take him out. More enemies going to stream out of the base though. We want to try and get Naruko to face these guys in melee because her skill is sufficient that she's unlikely to lose one on ones. And there actually, Mary saved us from having to fight that enemy by just shooting him through the stomach. So now I regrouped a little bit more, sniped off a few more enemies, but another wave of enemies spawned and started charging towards us. I wasn't going to have time to load up another shot, so it was time for battle. I want the battle to take place around the doorway if I can, so the Onobushi and Mari can make use of their ranged weapons to support my attack. So once they get a little bit closer, we go in for the fight and we do start taking a couple of hits, but very weak hits that bounce mostly off our armor, so we are fine. And we managed to arrange the fight, so it's actually just a series of one-on-ones. The enemy didn't manage to surround us with the four guys they had there, so that actually went okay. We're now completely surrounded by the bodies of our enemies, and it's about time to just charge through the rest of the base. I think we've cleared most of them out, but we need to go check the other side where there must still be enemies. So as Mary and the Onobushi follow behind me, someone comes around the corner with a Naginata and actually gets a hit, slashing with the weapon's very long reach. So Naruko's health falling very low now, we probably cannot take another hit. But I do have ammunition for my ranged weapon, so I can be more conservative if I need to. Although in this case, the Onobushi shooting around the corner revealed to me that someone must be just here. He was luckily in the middle of reloading, so we took him down. And there was only one more enemy, I spotted him there out in the open, ran sideways so he would miss his shot, and then a shot back takes him down. So that brings to an end this frantic assault on the base that didn't go as expected, and there were way more enemies than expected, but we've surely done the locals a great service through this victory, so now We'll gather up our wounded and prepare the party to continue the journey. It was beyond clear that Nariko could not ultimately solve the problems she was fighting. Halfway through her journey to Hokkaido, she had seen enough of the increasingly intense wars, rebellions and raids that her actions were like a single bucket of water cast into a blazing inferno. As much as she wanted it, what she was doing wasn't for the people as a whole anymore. They were, it seemed, beyond saving. But the people she encountered along the way, and the friends who supported her in and out of battle, they could be pulled back from the brink. Finding the treasure wasn't likely to change anything, 
but the hope that it somehow would was enough to keep them all going, Nariko more than any. Thank you so much for watching. Our journey east will give us a reunion with Great Lord Takeda in the next episode of Nariko's Treasure.